guys, welcome back to another mythology and makeup. First and foremost, I do want to dedicate this video to my sister. Today is her birthday, January 13th. So happy 29th birthday, Kayla. I love you. And I thought this would be the perfect dedication video to you because it's about Capricornus, which is Capricorn. And you are a Capricorn. So my mirror is down here, so I'm going to be looking down a lot while I'm doing this. But I actually thought it was quite interesting. I never really thought about diving into the different creatures of the Zodiac and why they are what they are and the legends behind them. And I actually bought Sebastian a underwater creature book. And this was one of the ones in it, which made me think, huh, I should really dive into it. And it's funny because the animal, the creature behind Capricorn is a seagull, but Capricorn is a earth zodiac, like a land zodiac. So I just thought that that was interesting. I also just took a shower, so my hair is so going wet. I if I dry my hair, um, well, I guess either way, it takes forever, but my arm becomes really tired. So as I said before, Capricorn is a seagull or a goatfish, whichever way that you want to kind of look at it, I guess. Essentially, a creature with the head of a goat and a body of a fish. Now, I'm also wearing a Ravenclaw shirt. Both my sister and I are Ravenclaws. So it's said that this creature, this goatfish, may have originated from Assyro-Babylonian depictions of their god, Wisdom Oenus. is half man and half fish. And there are actually two common myths that are behind this constellation of Capricornus. So we're going to talk about both of them. Definitely make sure to comment what your zodiac is because I want to do one on all of the zodiacs. So the first one is associated with Anne. So Pan was a satyr, like he was, he was a god, but he was a satyr. He was half man and half goat. He was a Greek god and he actually invented the Pan flute, which are those, um, those pipes that you blow on the different pipes and it makes music. A monster Typhon attacked Olympus and incapacitated Zeus. Pan went and convinced all the other gods to go to Egypt and take the form of different animals. And this was in order to hide, to kind of lead Typhon away so that they could help Zeus and save the other gods as well. And kind of like all of humanity and stuff. So when Pan jumped into the Nile, his bottom half actually turned into a fish. Then he was half goat and half fish. He had the top half of a goat with the front legs, and then the bottom half was a fish's tail. Typhon had left to look elsewhere for the gods, and when he did that, Pan and Hermes, which is the messenger of the gods, he is also a god, um, went and helped to restore Zeus. So then when Zeus was fully okay again, he went off to defeat Typhon. So then after Zeus's victory, he put the constellation of Capricorn into the night sky to kind of honor Pan and serve as a reminder of this victory. So then this leads us to the second legend. This one talks about the seagoat Prissus. This is the father of the race of seagoats. So he's the father of all of the seagoats. Seagoats are known to be intelligent and honorable creatures that are quite favored by the gods in the sea near the shore. And they can think and speak. So then Kronos, the god of time, which was actually a titan, Kronos was the also the parent of, or the father of like Zeus and Hera and Poseidon, Hades. We'll get into Kronos later. But Kronos also created Prissus. So because Prissus was created by Kronos. He also had the ability to manipulate time. The le this legend ties into Capricorn mythology 
And it starts when the young sea goats find their way to the shore. They use their front legs to kind of like pull themselves up and they like to bathe and not bathe, but like relax and sleep in the sun. However, the longer they're on shore, the more they turn into a normal goat. Their fish tail becomes a hind legs and they slowly lose their ability to speak and think. Now, this upset Priscus a lot because he didn't want to see his beloved children turn into these goats that he would never see again and that he couldn't communicate with, couldn't have any relationship with whatsoever. So he was determined to make it so his children couldn't go to shore. He didn't want them to become mindless animals that could never return to sea. So Prisus tried to manipulate time. So when the seagulls would make their way to sea and they'd start to slowly become these mindless goats, essentially that we know today, which sounds really mean, but when they started to become normal goats, he would rewind time and only he would be aware that he was doing this. Like the goats, people themselves, like they had no idea this was happening. So he would rewind time in hopes that he could prevent his children from going to shore and leaving the sea. He would try to forbid them from going to land, try to warn them about what would happen. But each time, the, their, his children always went to shore. Now, eventually, Priscus realized that he just could not control his children. And I feel like a lot of parents can relate to this story. But he decided that he was going to stop rewinding time and he was going to let his children fulfill their destiny. He resigned himself to loneliness and went to Kronos and begged him to let him die because he couldn't bear to be the only sea goat left. Now, instead of killing Prissus, Kronos instead decides to put Prissus up in the sky and there he can live out his immortal life as the constellation Capricorn. And that way he could always keep an eye on his children from high up above, no matter where they were. So it ends up being like a quite beautiful story in the end. Like he realizes he can't control them and he kind of just lets them be, but he can't bear it. So instead, like, he, everybody kind of gets, I mean, I don't know if the sea goats are happier, but he ends up being able to still see his children in the end, where if he was just a sea goat, he would never have seen them again if they ended up being land goats. So those are the two main legends of the Capricornus and how the Capricorn constellation that we know and that zodiac came to be. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comment down below. And don't forget to let me know what your zodiac is. And again, happy birthday to my lovely sister. I love you. And to the rest of you, make sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And until next time, I love you guys. Bye.